In a world of limitless opportunities and countless challenges, the choices we make manifest themselves into the very roads that guide us. In the tribulations and triumphs that shape, weather and bind these paths together are the very essence of what makes the world such a beautifully strange place. But we walk our path with no map, in search of answers that nobody has, simply hoping that we don't get lost along the way. So maybe just sharing our story of where we come from and the things that have guided us along the way can be enough to guide those lost in their own path. I'm Zach Bonanza, and this is the Lost Guidance Podcast. Everything in this world is made up of matter. And those matters behave with each other in certain ways. And that, students, is chemistry. Uh-huh. 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 That's right. We're here. We're coming at you. Big Jimmy in the house. Big Jimmy in the house. All right, what is up, man? Uh, not much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third episode of the Lost Guidance Podcast. As you know, I'm Zach Bonanza, and this is my good buddy, Jimmy Wilson. Thanks for coming on, man. What's up? And uh, for all of those of you watching, this might be only the third episode ever, but it is going to be the biggest episode ever. Oh, yeah, biggest guest yeah. yet. Too. Although we did have Adam Levine on episode one. That <laughs> that's episode a, will never be shown. That's, that, a, that's uh, my buddy Matt. He just <laughs> we, I always bust his balls. He looks just like Adam Levine. Well, not just like him, but like distant cousins maybe, you know? <laughs> you think he uh, played the Super Bowl halftime and that's why I was so shitty? Definitely, yeah. Okay, that explains <laughs> it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know we've discussed it and... To everybody who's watched the episode so far, thank you. Uh, I like to think that I'm putting in a lot of hard work and that people appreciate the fact that there's something powerful about just telling stories with some good people. And so that's really awesome to see some support from everybody. But uh, the underlying theme of this uh, show entirely is that we're looking for people who have some sort of aspect in their life that guides them, something that whether they're conscious of it or not is a motivating factor, a driving factor. And today, topic of focus is how science guides us. Yeah, um, I've said it before, I have a biological psychology degree, so I like, I, I wanted to learn about the brain and the body, and that was really interesting. But I know you also have quite a love of science. Um, so I was wondering if we can just get into that a little bit and just see, you know, kick it a little bit, see where that takes us. Yeah, it's definitely... A, I'm, I did, I'd say it's more of a love-hate relationship, you know, I definitely what love science, but, you know, hate all the long hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're, all right, so you're a scientist now, Yes. and you are about to be a scientist in New York City. Yes. Which so is pretty awesome. Right now, we work Fucking together. Kick-ass yep. bass. Going to be working for Cornell down in uh, the city, doing leukemia and Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer research. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty, wow, how pretty, powerful. Pretty pumped about it. So- what led? I mean, let's talk. Let's take it back, man. When did you realize? I I remember realizing at a young, like, high schooler. I'd say maybe ninth, tenth grade, that I wanted to get into the psychology field, and that's what led me to get a degree in human services, a two year degree. And then I realized I wanted to get more of the ingrain. I wanted to know the depths of it. You know, I really wanted to understand the cell, cellular level of it. And uh, so that's what led me to get my degree. You know, kind of a black and white, open and shut case. But how did you get into it? That's a, that's a good question. <laughs> what led you here, Jimmy Dubs? Gosh. So when I first started college, I was a business major. Really? Yeah. Where'd you Where'd you go to college? For everybody who doesn't know, Ohio University, the greatest school of all time. Yeah. No. Nope. I don't know if you guys can see that. No. Nope, no. Nope, yeah. No. Mind. You probably could. Okay. Um. It's a good quality <laughs> camera. So. Uh, Started off as business, and I went into something like I think I switched to like a finance major. Then I went to like a, just a bio major, and I eventually <laughs> ended up. And what I finally found was uh, molecular and cellular biology. Okay, um, just jumping all over the place. As for what led me there, at first, um, I can't really say. You know, it's just uh, I was trying to find my fit. Just taking a bunch of classes, anything that, which interested me, and uh, the biology classes were. What really? Uh, so you how know. did you? So you were in high school and you probably were just like, I want to make money. I'll do finance, right? Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly like whatever what it was. Yeah, I mean, like back then, I wanted to be the 
uh, somebody that drives a Tesla and has a million dollars. That could still be the dream. Yeah, but nowadays I'd be uh, more than happy with being a person with a $40,000 salary but making uh, actual improvements to humanity. Yeah. No, that's a yeah, that's total awesome. shift from where I was uh, six, seven years ago. That's great, man. Yeah, I, I like to think that when you're doing hands-on research and when you're contributing to some scale of somebody's life, it's a, it's a powerful thing, and that is a motivator in itself. And uh, so that's really cool, man. It's I'm glad that you found your calling a little bit more. Now it seems like it really is becoming full into fruition for you because, you know, you've you've taken this job. And what did you do before you worked as a scientist? Uh, well, just college. You were just in right out of college, right? Yeah, to being a scientist, yeah. and now to being a next step up scientist. What, what yes. level? So what level would you be at now? Well, so calling so, well, so I mean, calling our position right now a scientist is a uh, far from yeah actual scientist right. <laughs> it's but a far I mean, throw, for lack of but, a better uh, term. I'd uh I'd like where we are um I'd be actually doing actual science uh I'd I'm gonna be actually uh hopefully publishing a couple papers in the next year or so the next couple of years they've told me um doing actual basic research that rather than studying drugs which we do right now it would be finding out what the drugs be made from i guess you could nice. say um so like literally the basement work of the actual Excuse me. Wow. basement work of the actual uh, projects around so anything, you yeah. you're gonna be the guy who literally figures out okay here's the issue what's it affecting let's look at it on a cellular level all right what can we get to stop that yeah pretty much yeah that's awesome yep. that's really cool uh i think it's cool because it's focused on such a big issue that seems to be making a little bit of progress in recent years but it's still a difficult one and that's like leukemia and cancer research mm -hmm. and oncology Definitely. and stuff like that so wow man that's insane so you went to so you went to ohio university yeah. greatest well you just like the classes there um and why did wait what oh i thought you were no asking. no no. you you had I, something I thought, to say. I thought you, I thought <laughs> no, you had no, a no, question no. right there no finish what i thought jimmy wills what so you were there you like going to class and you must well, didn't really like going to class, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know I was more and <laughs> whatever. You know, uh, skipping a couple classes every week oh, was man. not a uh, was not a distant every week. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see your attendance record. Oh no, attendance record was horrible. <laughs> if there was actually attendance uh, policies in any of my classes, I would not have graduated. But you did well. Yeah, I did fairly well. Um, I mean. When I wanted to get out of college, I wanted to go straight into my PhD, but that's being held off. And um, this next place I'm going to will be this next step that will actually get yeah. me there for uh, yeah. eventually. But, well, uh, a lot of grad schools look at stuff like that, you yeah. know, like, hey, what have you been doing in your off time? And you're going to be like, research. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to be taking. You know, I've also been thinking about going back to grad school. Um, but likewise, I think that I think my resume will show good things. It's not like I went to college and. No offense, but I'm flipping burgers or something, you know? I'm not wiping ass off a toilet seat at some restaurant or something. So I think I think those things all get taken into consideration. So it's good that you're on a good path. And definitely, I could see you one day becoming a doctor. And maybe if you stick with that company long enough, it just becomes you're, you're at the top. And then I'm coming down there, <laughs> staying at your high rise. And <laughs> God, if yeah. I a high rise in Manhattan, I'd be uh, living life good. Oh, yeah. that's the Oh, what a sweet gig. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Until, I mean, until New York City floods, but whatever. Yeah, I was, I was actually <laughs> just about to say that. Yeah, <laughs> until it floods. <laughs> Fuck it. You're on the 50th yeah. floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, get a helicopter that just takes me to the grocery store. That's all, yeah, that's all oh, you need. Don't got to worry about the floods. Yeah. Oh, man. So, I was one of those kids in college who could, like, not go and barely study, and I could still do good on tests. I was really good at taking tests. Um but I, you know, I was working at, I was working part time uh, at the halfway house, and I was doing nights, midnight to eight a.m. classes from like nine to four, homework for three hours, sleep for three hours. It was more than likely I was gonna fall asleep in some of my classes. It happened a lot. <laughs> I mean, you're taking one of them was uh, marriage, marriage, and religion across world cultures. I've never been so exhausted in my life. Literally, like reading a paper every day about like oh. Uh, some, some tribe gives this particular nut and then I get a 12 page slideshow about this nut that is a marriage proposal item in fucking, I don't know, Botswana or something. And I'm like, 
what is what am I learning from this? Well, how is this going to help me in the in the real world? All right, it makes me more di- diversified and cultured, I guess. But I was like, it was so hard to stay awake. So I I had to often balance, you know, my schoolwork and my attendance, and I so I get that. Um, what what's your excuse? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, my excuse. Um, gosh, uh, definitely partying. <laughs> you partied a little definitely, bit uh, too much. Definitely hit up the bars a little yeah, too much. Yeah, you know? uh, I wanted you to say it before I told the people about. Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, going out four or five nights a week is very <laughs> detrimental to <laughs> your education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we've gone out a few times, had some drinks, and uh, you know, I've never heard a five-letter word come out of somebody's mouth so often. Shots, shots, please. Shots, shots. Shots, shots, but that's that's more so Alan. Yeah, a little bit of Alan, but man, first night you came out, you were, I don't know, you were saying like, oh, you know what the best shot is? Uh, what you say? J Mo orange. orange juice. Yep. Yeah, and then you just go, can I have ten shots of whiskey? <laughs> like uh, Jack Daniels <laughs> or something? I'm like, where is he going with this? Well, you know, I mean, I was just meeting your friends for the first time, so yeah. I had to be a person buying shots, you know, coming with gifts and uh, yeah. you know making people happy. <laughs> the cola nut, if you will, from Botswana. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um that's great so you party you party hard i can yeah. tell you dude you have a you have a good attitude when it comes to partying or when it comes yeah, to going definitely. out having a good time hey nothing wrong with having a good time you know and still doing your shit it's when you go out and have a good time and you don't do your shit yeah it becomes an issue and that was uh my issue up until a couple years ago <laughs> really so it was an issue oh yeah definitely i mean like i said when you go four or five nights a week i mean trying to study okay is uh Kind of yeah. a difficult process. Yeah, man. I can imagine. Um, I mean, because the first two years are easy, but then by your first two years, you yeah. settle in, and then you're like, I'm going to go a little harder in the in the night scene. Yeah. So it all worked out, though, right? You graduated, and... Yeah. Well, all right. So I guess while we're on the topic, before we transition, what's, like, your craziest story? Craziest story? Oh, gosh. The craziest story you could say without, like, everyone who's seeing this is, like, <gasps> James. Oh, God. Um, I, I think it's, uh, one that I've told you once, uh, when I almost cut off my finger. Ah, uh, yeah. I remember you saying this, but I don't remember how. So, uh, storm drains that you find on a street. Yes. They okay. weigh what, like a couple hundred pounds or so. So, uh. Which most people don't know unless you pick one up. Yeah. Who just goes around picking up a storm drain? I know, right? Who goes around picking up storm drains? Uh, I guess I do. Dirt, dirt, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am, like, trying to think, um. All cool shit. Trying to lift up the storm drain. Uh, Friend says something dumb. Makes me laugh. I drop it. (laughs) My fingers, uh, I'm pretty sure it was this one. My finger was stuck in between this 200 pound storm drain and the concrete of the street. Like the corner of it? Like. Or just flat? Flat on the street. So like. Okay. So it's just pushing it like a sandwich. So like the street, my finger. Okay. Storm drain. I don't know if that was caught, but yeah. Um. I'm just trying to shrink this. Continue. I'm listening, brother. So, yeah, it was uh, quite painful. It was probably there for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds before I finally lifted off my finger. And uh, immediately my finger was swollen. Um, I'm actually surprised it wasn't completely flat. You no. Know? But, uh, no, I was hammered enough that the first thought in my life was, no, this finger has not done me anything good in my <laughs> life. So I'm going to just cut this motherfucker off. <laughs> so I am. Uh, Run to this apartment building nearby where uh, these kids I know, like at this time I didn't know them real good. I probably maybe hung out with them four or five times in the past like few months. It was just getting to know them. I burst into their apartment. Luckily they're there and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I need a knife. <laughs> <laughs> he did not. You were literally going to cut they're your like, own they're, finger they're, off. Yep, yep. They're like, uh, uh, they're, they tell me in the kitchen. I'm like, cool, thanks. So I go, <laughs> go to the kitchen, grab a knife. And then my friend that was with me when I was uh, picking up the storm drain, burst in and they're like like what are you doing and they uh they <laughs> get, get the knife out of my hands <laughs> and you were uh gonna cut, you were gonna cut your own finger off because it hurt yes <laughs> yes <laughs> this hurts you know what this finger hasn't done me any fucking good i am <laughs> sick of it i'm never gonna get married i don't want oh it was the other hand yeah oh man yeah uh, i lo- i lucked you- out you are a nutcase. You locked out that someone stopped you from cutting your own finger off? I yeah. bet you would have gotten a quarter slice in and been like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, and then I would have had to go to the hospital and then probably like... Ruin your drink. Yeah. Did you just wrap it up and... No, I didn't wrap it up. I just went to sleep. 
<laughs> no, I mean, there, there was no blood. I mean, there's definitely like a lot of internal bleeding and such. It was but, swollen. Yeah, it was swollen bad. Like, uh, probably took about two, two and a half months to heal. Wow. And for the first probably month or so, anything, even just like brushing up against a t shirt or something, been there. would bend me over in pain. Yeah, I've been there. Um, one time uh, when I was in gym class in high school, we were playing capture the flag, you know, it was like, but it was like dodgeball setup, you know what I mean? So half and half field. I guess that is capture the flag, right? It's not free reign field, is it? Uh, sometimes it's, sometimes I, it is. I, I mean, think sometimes I feel it's like, free reign with two yeah. home bases. This time was half the gym and exactly. And you had to dart across and get some shit. Whatever. Wait, where's the dodgeball comes then? Come no, in, it was just, oh. I meant it was like a dodgeball. Ah, so. uh, okay. Um, my buddy comes over. Oh, no, no. This kid runs up, slide tackles me like a dill hole. Like one of these, I'm going to be a Marine by 17. Like, you know, just making crap up. Like, oh, like Cap- even... Captain JROTC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, slide tackles me. And to this day, I have a lump in my, like part of my shin is numb. I like tweaked it bad. Not even 10 seconds later, my other buddy launched me into the corner of the collapsed bleachers against the wall. And I just ripped this whole, so like under this tattoo right here, and you can even feel it. It's got like, uh, it's like textured. This whole thing was just totaled. Oh my God. It hurts so bad. And uh, same thing, dude. I couldn't wear a coat or anything. Even if I wrapped it up, just touching either one of those injuries. <laughs> Why did <laughs> my high school coach, boy, the gym teacher, he was a crazy bastard, dude. He would full. So we do 10 base kickball, right? He would full on launch a ball at anyone a girl like a, a like several times there was this, just a like a young high school girl scrawny little running to first base and he just <laughs> almost knocked her unconscious with like a volleyball like not a saw like now it's like those foam balls yeah. you know it's like yep. child's play he'd have a full grip on this thing ready to whoosh. one of those like rubber ones yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever see that movie with the kid who who breaks his arm and all of a sudden he becomes like a pitcher for the Mets or something? Gary Busey's in it. I think it's called The Rookie or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like snaps. That. Yep. That's exactly him. He would just like wind up and just whoosh. It was so terrible, dude. Gym class was extreme in, in high school. But it was so great. Um, I don't know I don't know what made me think of that. Uh, that's crazy, though. So you almost cut your own goddamn finger yeah. off because it hurt. Yeah. So that's a pretty crazy story. I mean, next morning I... Uh... No, I was very happy. I always do a ton of fingers. Wow. You're like, was that a dream? <laughs> I often do that. Uh, okay, so you survived college. Somehow. Somehow. And you lived in Ohio at the time. That's where you're from, right? Ohio? No. Oswego. Oswego. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I always get those confused. I mean, they both start with O. Yeah. And I guess they have two O's. Oswego. <laughs> They have they start and end with an O, so I mean it's understandable. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. lose a few letters in between. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so from Oswego, what made you want to go to Ohio then? No idea. Just got um, accepted. No, just applied to a bunch of schools, and uh, I had never even stepped foot in the state of Ohio before my first day moving out there. You didn't even go visit the campus. No. Awesome. Just went out there. You're like, yeah, I think I like it. I you you probably looked at it online, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted the adventure. Um, How many see, kids go to Ohio? Ooh, about tw- 28, 29,000. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I wanted adventure to see if I could make a life for myself. I mean, granted, it's easy to do that during college because yeah. every other person's your age and trying to do the same thing as you. But yeah, it was a, it was a good experience. That's awesome. So you get out to college, then what made you come back to New York and realize you wanted to land in Utica for a job? Or did you just start applying to jobs back in New York? Just started applying to jobs. Um, I actually had three jobs offered to me all within a week. Wow. Yeah. Icon, um, of course. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> uh, place in Syracuse. Um, and then a place down in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Uh, Should have went. Well, this one played the best. And you know, I got uh, all those student loans I have to take care of. Yeah. yeah so. That was part of the decision why I went to a, a small. Is that you? Sorry. Pardon this interruption. This yeah. message is brought to you by Coors Beer. He asked me the to... all new Coors Original. He asked me <laughs> to turn my phone off and doesn't even do it for I'm himself. Such a dick. God. No. Uh, Never not coming back on the Coors. show. Not brought to you by Coors yet. <laughs> uh, you are coming back don't be i don't know probably not by the time you move but i'm gonna i figured we can do on scene 
podcast. It'd That'd be, be pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. I would definitely get all of your roommates like in on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would, part two, maybe even part three or four, mm-hmm. you know, just keep on expanding on my stories. They sell a Zoom. I think it's a Zoom H4 or something. It's like a portable recording device. So like something I would use my computer for. And then uh, you can plug my XLR mics, these types of mics, into it. So I can bring my microphones, which are good quality. Um, anybody who's wondering, all right, let me finish this thought, and then I'm going to make another thought. Um, so I can bring this, plug it into that recorder, and it also has, I believe it has, like, um, moving, uh, rec- uh, what do you call them? Like, attachment microphones on it. So, like, if I didn't even have these. And they're pretty good, you know. I've read... This is, like, the top quality mic, but it's, like, a couple hundred bucks. So, I figure if I can save up and get that by the time I come down to see you, it'd be perfect. We'll just need these. We can record with our phone or whatever if we want to. But then we'll have the audio. We can put it on SoundCloud. Because you can find this show on SoundCloud if you want the audio version, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Lost Guidance Podcast. You can also find it on Facebook, Lost Guidance, and Instagram, Lost Guidance Podcast. Um, anyway, so yeah, we could do this. We could do a part two, but what I was going to say, uh, anybody who's been thinking about recording or doing their own shit, I thought it was so hard trying to figure out and do all the research of how to get what's good. And like, it was hours and I've spent hours and that's what makes me proud. Like when I see people who are like viewing it and they're like, man, that's a really good name. Like I took days and days of writing names down until I found this name. And I thought that is significant to me. And like I rolled with it. I drew the cover art here. And then I like just chintzy doodles. But like I spent days doing it. Like I took my time and did the best I could. And I had a good friend of mine, Carly. Well, not a good friend, but a friend of mine, uh, Carly Wright. Again, shout out. I did it in the first episode. Made killer cover art for me. Uh, I put in time to find out the best interfaces and headphone amps and try to set up the studio and acquire all these pieces and get these good mics, find the best mics, find the best uh, recording software and editing software. So anybody who has any questions, just email me at lostguidancepodcast at gmail.com. I'm more than happy to share whatever information I know because um, I totally believe that just talking to somebody like my man Jimmy Dubs here, (laughs) these are fun stories, dude. And it makes you like if, if some kid who's 18 and he's in high school right now is thinking, man, what good is it going to Ohio? What if I don't do well there? Well, what if you go there and you have a good time and you barely show up to class and you fucking still kick ass and then you have some funny stories. You almost cut your own finger off and then you still make it into a lab. And now a few years later, you make it into another lab in Manhattan. You don't know where life will take you. And so I guess all encompassing fact of whatever all that nonsense I just said is go out there and try it. I've been trying it. I've been working hard at it. I appreciate everyone who supports my hard work. And uh, anybody who wants to talk, just get a hold of me. I love talking to people, and I think there's a lot to be said for it. All right, that was my tangent of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, cheers. I don't think we've done a cheers yeah, yet, man. I'm glad you could cheers. finally come on. This is a good convo. I think an hour is just enough of a snippet to let people in and know, like, this is – all right, Jimmy Wilson's a cool kind of guy, and he's got his head on straight, though. And I, I knew that right from – Knowing you right when we got to know each other, uh, we didn't know each other, so we worked for the same company, and it was I was always in a different department, and then I got into a new department, and then I realized I could go kind of walk around and talk and discuss with different people I didn't formally see, and I got connected with you, man. I don't even know how we really met or started talking. Yeah, neither. Uh, I think it was fantasy football, actually. Fantasy, you're yeah, right. Fantasy yep. football. Oh wow, how do yep. you remember that? I have a terrible memory. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so I commissioned like a fantasy football league for a few people we work with. And uh, that's what it was. I think you're right. We were just sending GIFs or GIFs. How do you say it? Um, I I it's, always like blended to the two. I always like GIFs GIF. or GIFs depending on who I'm talking to. And I look at the reception of it. And if you're like, I'm like, okay. And I say the other one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry I offended you with my, uh, <laughs> my horrible pronunciation. With a G that could be used either way. <laughs> So, yeah, we used to send each other GIFs. I'm going to say GIF. Sometimes I like to spell it out. G-I-F-S. GIFs? Yeah, just really like... GIFs? G-I-P-H-S. I don't even know how to spell it. No, it is G-I-F-S. Why'd you say it? You're fucking with me, man. No, yeah, so I remember we were sending each other... I don't even remember. I think the first one I sent was, like, 
Marshawn Lynch doing the dance away or something like that. I love the NFL has the best gif gifs. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do. I love football. Like anything pertaining to the NFL, because f- players try to be so serious. Uh, I find it hysterical, like bad lip readings on YouTube. You guys got to watch those. Mm-hmm. They like overlay the players talking, but with like some hilarious voices. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know what I was getting with that. Something about how we met. Oh yeah. That's how yeah, we met. Just uh, talking shit over the fantasy football. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah. So I was saying, uh, I knew right away you were a good guy. And then I forgot, I think it was, I remember we just said one night, we were like, we should just grab yeah. a drink pizza and wings i think it was maybe my birthday or some was like the first time we oh yeah drank it, together right it was your birthday yep yep jackie yeah, that was the night oh, i was nice uh then. all for no no before then because we i went out with first time we ever hung out i went out with you and your friends and you guys had that horrible uber driver oh that, yes like, yes yes ditch or something. yes oh yes okay so we ordered yeah. an uber driver this woman picks me up at my friend's house and uh i say it, it's kind of in the back country a little bit and I say, take a right. And he immediately goes, take a left. And we're like, what the fuck? And she stops the car as if that's a good idea. You've already turned right. Go right. What are you talking? I'm not lying to you. It's just two different ways to get to the same. To every road leads to the same destination eventually, right? Um, so I'm like, no, take a right. And she goes, no, no. And I was like, all right, whatever. I was a little, I had a buzz on. And I was like, just do what he wants. So she backs. <laughs> she had like a 2011. Excuse me. I think it was like a 2011 Chevy Cruze. She just backs right up, like thinking she was near a driveway. She was maybe four cars away from a driveway. Full on parks it vertical in a ditch. And I'm looking up at the sky and I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't think that I don't think that was the right move. You probably should have just went right. Right. Like, why didn't you fucking listen to me? Uh, She starts like freaking out. So my buddy, we've only made it nine feet from my friend's house. So he has to run over, grab his truck, pull her out. This thing fucking. Bam! Smacks the ground. It makes this terrible noise. And I'm like, sounds good. Let's go. She goes, do you guys still want to ride? And I'm like, after all that, you still want to give me a ride? I was like, yeah. I mean, we don't want to call another Uber and wait. I think we were because we were meeting you or something. Yeah, no. I mean, I was at the bar for probably a little longer than I wanted. And I was thinking like, is this is this, is this a big prank right now? He <laughs> doesn't even want to hang out with me, man. This guy from work's being such a douchebag. <laughs> No, no, that was, I forget. yeah, that's a crazy night. I've had quite a few very interesting Uber drivers in the area. One of them picked me up, and I was like, I'm pretty sure you got vomit on your car, like on the outside and a little on the inside. And she goes, no, nah, whatever you brought in here, that's, that's like, you know, chain smoking, whatever. Mm-hmm. Car full of, like, just tar on the windows, cigarette smoke smell, and dog hair everywhere. So much shit everywhere. And we had five people in this thing. It was, oh, it's disgusting. And I go... Yeah, I'm pretty sure you got a uh, puke all over the door on both sides. She goes, you brought it in here with you. That's whatever's in here is your fault, and you brought it with you. And I'm like, okay. And I go, guys, when you get out, look at this door and tell me <laughs> if that's vomit. I get out. I put my goddamn hand in on accident because I had, like, spaced on it. I get out. I go, and both my friends immediately go, that's throw up. <laughs> it's all <laughs> over, dude. Clearly vomit, you know? And I was like, okay, that's, and I'm like gagging, you know, I'm like, I just want to wash my hands, you know, it's down at Barrick. Yep. So yeah, a couple of interesting Uber drivers in the area. Weirdest uh, Uber driver for me. Well, it wasn't so weird. It was just a strange occurrence. So I get in this Uber. So talking to the guy and uh, he's telling me how uh, he just bought his wife like this uh, 2010, 2011, uh, like Mustang. And she's also driving for Uber, whatever. A couple of days later, I go call another Uber. It's her. <laughs> this 2010, 2011 Mustang pulls up. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was a funny coincidence. Like, hey, yeah. your husband I'm like, I, I know you. <laughs> I know you. Like, your husband picked me up the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you went <laughs> radical surfer, bro. Hey, lady, <laughs> I fucking know you. <laughs> um, Wow, we just went so far in the rabbit hole on that one. Yeah, I don't even know where we left off. With um, oh, something about, oh, when I was getting to know you. Oh, I was telling people that was just a weirdest like train of thought we just went on. That's what we do, bro. Yeah. That's why I like having you on, just talking to you. That's why we just you know go grab a drink on a Friday night or something. That's, that's why this is gonna have to be like a four or five part show, yeah. just to tell the actual yeah. like forty five minute I long think, story we set aside is gonna take four hours because we just keep yeah 
getting off track. I think next time we make it a two hour episode and we call this ready. The Jimmy Wilson experience. Ooh, I, Ooh. I don't mind that. If you want to start your own podcast and take that name, just give me like a quarter for every time you make a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> You, you want to get me uh, the $1,500 in equipment first? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> That's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> Not including this fucker that I just bought. Um, no, the Jimmy Wilson experience, though. I think that could be a new segment. The Jimmy Wilson experience. The most provocative show you will ever listen to. I should have did this quicker, but... That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... I was saying kids, whoever's out there and wants to believe in themselves and record things. I think stories are a good thing. Uh, it lets you know that you've tried really. I'm, I can't believe the first two episodes. I could not recall like this, but now I know what we were just talking about getting better. Um, you know, you, you could be some kid living in Oswego who goes to Ohio and thinks he's going to fuck up and fuck off and still makes it and does something with his life. And now he's a scientist and now he's making his dreams happen. So just keep trying. And uh, I was saying that it's, just meeting you the first time I knew you were a good dude. And I think that, you know, genuine nature in somebody is something that's easily visible. And that's why you're doing well in your field. I think learning science itself and having a degree where those are your class, that's your curriculum. I think that teaches you something a lot. Uh, I think that teaches you humility in the sense that we're so small. Like you take astronomy classes, you know, anything pertaining to the earth and universe, which is another episode I'd like to have is about space and science in that regard. Um, it makes you think you're so small, but it, you can also get smaller and your cells are so small. And it makes you like almost realize like everything is very more, much more dynamic than you would think, you know, the body, the mind, everything. So I think it gives people different perspective. Um, you know, you learn about like evolutionary biology and microbiology virology and it's like it teaches you the things that make this world happen you know like why do viruses exist you know how are they able to pass themselves into your into your genome and like you, that's why they stick around and stuff you know how do these things happen and you get an appreciation for just how small we are on this earth but also all that happens on such a small scale on this earth and that's almost humbling you know i feel like like you got to be conscious of these things. You got to be self-aware if you're going to make it in a science field because otherwise you're the opposite to being self-aware is being oblivious, I would think, right? Yeah. So if you're oblivious to everything, then you that's not good science. That's not going to make a good scientist. That's uh very subjective and very biased. That's that's what'll happen. You'll become very shut down and closed-minded if you're not consciously self-analyzing and realizing what's around you, what you're going through and all that stuff. So, and uh, at the same time, it's also somewhat freeing, I guess you could say, I mean, going back to what you were saying about how we're so small in the whole scheme of things. And in the end, we're kind of, uh, don't really matter yeah. in the whole course of things, but it's freeing to think that like, I mean, what I do today, people 200 years from now, aren't going to remember. I mean, obviously this, cause I mean, I mean, this I is going to be the greatest future podcast. aliens from, like some other units from some other galaxy are going to be listening to this podcast to understand human nature. And they're going to say, I want to talk about human beings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was waiting to use that, man. That was, that was actually a perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely kind of freeing. Like to think like what you do day to day, I mean, isn't going to matter. And 20 years from now, no, I yeah. mean, a couple hundred years from now, nobody's going to know your name. So, I mean, that's why you got to try your best and just try to make a difference. Yeah. I mean, so just, I mean, why worry about what people think? I mean, just do what you want to do. And that's kind of what I've been doing for my entire life. I just do what I feel like. That's true, man. You know, you got to, you got to do what makes you happy Mm -hmm. and don't, excuse me. Sorry. This beer's getting me. (laughs) That was gross. I'm sorry. You got to do what makes you happy because, like you said, nobody's going to remember you. There, If you look around this room, there is somebody who has designed and made all of these things by fish and pole, uh, this, these signs, Blue Moon. Somebody invented Blue Moon. Who, yeah. Who's that guy? No one knows. Nobody knows. Well, I'm sure someone knows, right. but we don't know. Right, but I'm yeah. saying you can't off the top of your head. I could tell you my light bulb was 
Edison, whatever he says. There was like five other people, whatever. I mean, how do you even know who your great, 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 great grandparents were by name? No, I mean, I know my great, great grandfather. That's why I went back forward just because I know like, no you, one ever knows. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, they were probably only alive 150 years ago. Yeah, too. yeah, I know, not that long ago. Yeah. You're right, and it took me a long time to figure out who my grandparents were. So my great grandfather was Joe Abendanza. And they, he came that's over a, from... That's quite an Italian name right there. Abendanza is Bonanza in Italian. Oh, wow. And, and Bonanza obviously means like like a plethora of, you know, like, I, like I it's was, a Bonanza. I just thought it had something to do with uh, bananas. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> For being a smart guy, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I guess, sorry, I gotta plug this in. So Joe Abendanza came here and he was sick and he was trying to say it was Abendanza. And I've heard my grandfather told me the story that it was uh it was he was sick and they misinterpreted it and just took it as the english vernacular and just said bonanza it could be just they just americanized his name but that's how we got bonanza to be and you know we're all related because that's a unique freaking name so and his wife was um oh god i know i can't remember it i don't know i'd have to look it up i don't want to waste time on that but um no, yeah, you're right. I mean, people don't even remember your family. Yeah, people forget. People won't remember who make if you even if you make something, you know. So yeah, make your own something. Make your own life. Yeah, you know, I'm you know I'm not looking to get famous off of having a podcast, but I I get excitement and pride out of doing these things, and I'm working hard at it, and I have fun guests on that I get to just shoot the breeze with, and. It's a good time, you know, and I'm not doing it for anyone else, but I hope someone else gets something out of it and then they do something for themselves because of it. I hope someone hears this and they're like, wow, this is, that was powerful. You're like, you're right. You know, it took two commonplace guys just to tell me like, why aren't I doing what I want to do? You know, why not? I like to talk. I want to talk to people. That's it. That's life. And that's a good point, man. I mean, if what what's the point? If you're going to be forgotten anyway in this world, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, this world is short, fleeting and you know, yeah. small, you know? you know, don't waste your time on uh, people that don't matter. Just yeah. spend time with the people you want and, uh, you know, enjoy right your times. Right on, dude. I keep <laughs> gripping this for some reason. This is right there. <laughs> 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 Listen to me. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. Well, uh, okay. So you leaving here soon. You nervous about living in New York city? Um, somewhat. Yeah. A I little mean, bit. It will probably be the easiest transition out of uh, Utica or Ohio, both places. I When I moved there, when I moved out here to Utica, I only knew one person. Yeah. Uh, moved out to Ohio, I didn't know anyone. Down in New York, I have some family, some friends, so that'll be an easier transition right there. Okay. Um, Occupy your time. Yeah. Um, well, like, just so much as a social aspect. I mean, just trying to become friends with people when you're an adult is so difficult. Yeah. Wow, um, yeah, that's a good way to look um, at it. I mean, so that's, uh, that's going to be pretty useful for me, just to have that... Uh, already a good social background yeah um you're a very sociable guy though yeah you get a couple of drinks in you and you just yeah i mean you're I, loose. I, I, you're I, loose, I, I make friends wherever <laughs> i go <laughs> yeah you do that's for sure i can vouch for that um, um i just want to check something quick yeah All right. so yeah i mean i'm not very i'm not really too nervous you know no. i mean if anything i'm just you'll be living can't in wait Ma- to get it started you'll be in, living in queens you said but working in um hopefully queens um so Things might change. Uh, I'm going down not this week. Originally, I was going to, but yeah. things changed earlier today where now instead I'm going to go down the weekend next weekend. So St. Paddy's Day weekend. And uh, check what? out places. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> you're not going to be around for St. Paddy's Day? Uh, I don't think so, no. Um, it depends. So it depends on when I come back. If I get everything situated Friday, Man. I'll be back Saturday. Man. My goal is to be back Saturday. Okay. See, I'm also throwing out the idea that I'm going to go down this Saturday to do figure it. out rent. And do then it. next Friday is when I do like Wait, my... you already have places lined up? Uh, I'm talking to people, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, it's hard to get. Yeah, I'm going to go down there with the checkbook and... uh. First place I like, I'm just signing the check right then and there. Nice. Yeah. Nice, man. That's the way to do it. Do they Are they all like one-year leases down there? I can't imagine they want a one-year lease on any A lot of them are month to months. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say. People are so flaky in New York, no way they want a whole I mean, year. Even just, I mean, even in half a year, the rent can go up by $200. That's true. They can I, raise it. Like, I think I was telling you, uh, 
Actually, I don't know if I was telling you this, but uh, so when Amazon was thinking about moving into Queens, the place I was, you were uh, saying something about this, yeah, tell me. Places I was looking at were eleven, twelve hundred dollars a month to live with four or five people. Uh, once they moved out, those same exact rooms, eight, nine hundred dollars a month. Wow. Yeah. Immediately dropped in price, and uh, yeah, that's crazy because everybody's like, "All right, what well, about to be twenty thousand more people in the area? Yep. Let's stockpile." Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's the market though. That's free market mm-hmm. capitalism. You can do whatever you want. Just set a price on it. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, right? Yep. yep. What's the regulation saying? I have to tell you how much my rent is by you know, like I have to have a standard. Uh, nothing. N- nothing. Yeah. I can charge five thousand dollars for my apartment I live in. If I own this place. Doesn't mean anyone's gonna rent it, but if someone does, it's their problem. There actually is like a rent control apartment. It's something is like there? if it's a building with six or more apartments that was built before nineteen seventy, they're rent controlled. What, and what's that mean? Which means they can only rent. I might have this completely wrong, but they get something where uh, they can only rise and rent to a certain amount, or they have to stay um, the same rent for a certain amount of years. Huh? Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Well, anyway, and so uh, like all the people from like friends and uh, how I met your mother can live in such huge apartments. They all <laughs> live in uh, rent control apartments, despite being like high school teachers. <laughs> That's true, man. They do all all of them have nice apartments, yeah. and they're all in New York City. Yep, all huge. Any ones show in, you've seen, huge ones in Manhattan too. It's like, yeah. no, this isn't real. <laughs> Any show you've seen that takes place in New York City, they have a huge apartment. You uh, ever watch New Girl? No, but no, I've heard it's they, funny. They, they have this great apartment. It's like got brick walls, and the uh, bathroom is literally like a urinals in it, and like a, a gym showers and stuff. It's a it's a pretty awesome apartment. Like if I could get a place like that, I so would. Oh yeah, but it's probably probably costs like a million dollars yeah. in New York. <laughs> I know that's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy how much rent is different than like a small city, a yeah. small metropolitan area. Um, what was I gonna say? Something about those shows you just said. Something about those shows you just said. What was it? Mm, something about the shows. <laughs> some of them shows. Some of them shows. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, man. So it's not that far away. So you're going to go down there. You start immediately. And then uh, yeah, April 1st. I still have. I'm still kind of worried that this is just a, a big uh, April Fool's Day prank. Cause, cause you start April first. Yeah, like I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna walk in and everybody's gonna be like, haha, April Fools! Yeah. You don't actually have this job, and then like I don't have a job. We at got all. you, sucker! <laughs> like, Way to ruin your life! We, we, oh, we man. got you to quit your job, you loser! <laughs> you freaking loser! You believed us? Did you even do dil- dil- due diligence? And I'll just uh, I'll just stand there and cry. Yeah. <laughs> We could choose to lose. That's how people loser. become homeless. This one company just April Fools is everybody, <laughs> <laughs> and they can't afford to get home. <laughs> it's like, like I spent all my money to get down here. <laughs> it's like why are the uh, 150 new hirees all starting on April first? <laughs> it's like oh, we got we got this huge break going on. <laughs> nothing, nothing, Patricia. Go back to work. All right. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. Let accounting handle it. You know what? Actually, Patricia, uh, Patricia, Patricia we uh, we got this new job for you. You're uh, starting April first. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha, you've got a promotion. You start April first. Make sure you move closer to the building. <laughs> yeah, like get like a really expensive uh, lease or something. Yeah. You know, get yourself me. a town car. Trust me, you'll uh, you'll be able to afford it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, can you imagine? It's all a conspiracy. Do you need a? Hold on. Man, I should really kept this up, or at least had two screens. I'm thirsty. I want a beer. What about you? You want a beer? You want a beer? Oh, I got another I beer. I got to keep that open so I can click those quicker. Um, you I, wanna, had a, you... I had a backup right next to me. Oh, you're good? All right, yeah. full stretch? All right. Full stretch? What the fuck is that? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Thank you for uh, complimenting my wingspan. I yeah. appreciate it. Just, uh, just free as a bird. For those of you that I'm don't know, uh, wingspan is nine feet long. You have a nine foot wingspan? Yeah, believe it or not, my hands drag on the ground when I walk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that can't seem right. <laughs> believe it or not, my hands drag <laughs> I'm on the ground. Six one, so I'm like, he literally walks like an orangutan. <laughs> Dude, that is great. <laughs> Shit. 
Okay, so back to science. <laughs> Would your parents just leave you on the monkey bars? Yep. <laughs> He dangled there for seven days and seven nights. Yeah, because see, I thought my whole body would stretch out. But since the resistance was only on my arms, only my arms stretched out. You just out. stretch yeah. arms strong. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, so back to... All right. <laughs> it's We got, like, uh, ballpark, 15 minutes. Um, ooh, my concert tickets came in. Where are you going? Uh, Washington, D.C. to see Greta Van Fleet, The Revivalists, um, somebody else. Uh Young the Giant and somebody else too, but I love both Greta Van Fleet and the Revivalists. They have, I mean, I love people who are musical these this day and age. Excuse me. And uh, Greta Van Fleet just won the Grammy for Best Rock Album, and they mm-hmm. sound like everybody says they sound like Led Zeppelin, but like I think better a little bit. Like they're coming out with great songs. All their songs are fantastic. Um, and then the Revivalists are a five man, I believe five man jam band. They have like a sax player. You know, like Dude, I love drummer. sax and music. Yeah, I play the sax. I played. Well, I still know how to play and read music and everything. I played for like eight years and I was killer. I went to all county. I won awards, jazz awards, and all that. Dude, I was fantastic at the saxophone, and I never should have quit. But my buddy got in trouble in high school and got kicked out of band. So I was like, you know what? And he's the only other tenor sax player. I was like, I'm going with him. <laughs> he's like one of us. He's like all of us. <laughs> you got to roll with your friends. <laughs> yeah, dude. So that was like. When I really started declining, and I bought one, and I I don't get to play it much because I always feel like a burden to my neighbors. Um, there's gotta be like something you can hook up to like mute the noise. You can like listen. You to You would it. think. Yeah. I don't know if they make an electric sax. They make they do that for violins and everything else now. Mm-hmm. You would think. I don't know. And they make uh, electric clarinets. I heard this one. I have a CD right behind you. It's called um, Midwest Hype, I believe. And they this one guy. Dude, I went to see the Dirty Heads in Kentucky in Indianapolis. And this guy played the space flute, but it was like an electric clarinet. Craziest sound I've ever heard. I don't even know what a space flute is. It is bonkers. Bonkers. I'll, I'll definitely by the next time, I will have a sound bite so I can show you what a space flute is. But I don't want to look it up. And get I just say it intrigues me enough that I'll probably have to search this up when I'll, I get home. I'll play some of the CD for you after the show if you want. Okay. Because that song, there's one song on it. It's like something about zombie face i don't know you know underground bands make weird names to try and become noticed yep. that's what they did but i loved it and i was and it was just this big fat guy just just happy as hell looking and he's just blown into this it looks like like uh the thing you play in zelda like the flute the o- ocarina never, of time or whatever that never was a nerd played zelda. that was a nerd moment for me you never played zelda ever no, no. really no didn't it play video games really growing up what? Yeah. Dude, I love video games growing up. I play them way less now, but still love them. Yeah, I started playing them when I was like late high school and then through college kind of. And then like once again, don't play them anymore. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm a huge Madden guy. Dude, that's the one game I will like. So my little brother has an Xbox whenever we get together. Madden. Madden. Nothing else. Dude, I or love. NBA 2K. Yeah, so, yeah, 2K. Dude, Madden is the best. And now like they, it's so crazy. Um, But anyway, the space, space flute guy. It's awesome. So maybe, I don't know, maybe they do make an electric sax. See how I'm trying to pull us back from the rabbit hole? I just tried to close out four different cover like I'm, like I'm hitting tabs on a computer, dude. I'm like, close that conversation yeah, we could, one at a time. We could just go space fluid, space science. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right back. Yeah. back transition, plug yep. it back in. Here we are, back to your regularly programmed show okay um, talking about science i know we've done it for about five minutes so i know far. okay so that's what i wanted to do so while we have a good well less than 15 minutes it doesn't matter if we go over or whatever um i i pulled up an article that was the 10 top scientific achievements of 2018 okay and it's from curiosity.com uh curiosity makes you smarter no shit <laughs> Um, I don't know. Curious it's, George is smartest. Shit. I didn't have time to look into these specifically, so I was thinking we can just go through them, talk about them. I know some of these I've looked at are legit because I've seen them on other websites. I don't know this website in particular, so if some of this is BS, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Honestly, I would be offended if it's bullshit Did and I'm on the show. Just give me fake science. <laughs> um, can I please see all your resources? Um, that is not parenthetically cited, so I don't think that counts. Oh, is this APA or what? We just use so many voices to describe teachers and students. 
Okay. Ready? So the first one is God, some this this first one I hated. Oh no, that's the second one. Okay. No, nope, that's the third one. Sorry. Oh, sorry, that's the last one. <laughs> Damn article. I was at the bottom. Uh, I was at the bottom. Was I was a, at the bottom of the article. It was a quick Okay, so we found the world's <laughs> oldest cave art in February. It says researchers announced that they had found sixty five thousand year old cave paintings in Spain. Not only does this make them the oldest known cave art, the timing actually predates the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe. So that means we're found paintings way before we even thought we found people. Yeah, people so. had even moved there. We thought it would have been too cold as far as my understanding was when I took like evolution and stuff. Well, um, humans are very resilient. They probably uh, – Neanderthals most likely, which means – oh, it probably came from Neanderthals, uh, which means they probably had cognitive abilities comparable to our homo sapiens. So a Neanderthal had migrated, even though most of them stayed in like Africa and like – migrated a different direction i don't remember exactly there was a split you know what i mean if you've yeah. ever seen the the chart or the map whatever map um so neanderthal probably just grew the intelligence to paint some cave art what that's pretty interesting wait were there actually like a ton of different uh hobo species like there's homo erectus also, also with like neanderthals and uh sapiens like also i think there's a few others and i, I want to say there was even one species that was supposedly like way smarter it than is. us yeah. humans okay. were and there was also like another species that like if they were alive today they'd be uh, like hobbits or something yeah so like so there was one i think it's called homo pithecus or some of those what, was that the uh, smart guys or something no these are the small i think this is the small one were I, they uh in, I like, should look sicily at... or something uh, where they lived or uh, something the ones hold on let me see uh i don't want to get any of this incredibly wrong and sound like an idiot Homopithecus is definitely real. I know that, but I can't remember where it's from. No, you it's a species of archaic human that lived throughout the uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Australopithecus. That's what it is. So. Although the term Australopithecine has a broader meaning as a member of Australia, uh, blah, blah, blah. Apparently evolved in Eastern Africa around 4 million years ago. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So I think that's just one of I think it's I think that's just one of the evolutionary kind of steps is Australia Pithecus. The one I'm thinking of is all right, so I remember the documentary and I don't remember what they were called. There was a species that made its way up along like the Asian border and it made its way downward um like New Zealand and in in Indonesia, that is, right? So, like, where the islands would normally split. But that was when that was all land. So these guys made it to the land down in, like, the corner going toward Australia. You know, if this was Pangea, yeah. mm-hmm. the one mass of land. Wait, were uh, humans even alive during Pangea? I would have this to would be like, it was way... No, no, no. I just mean, like, you're right. I shouldn't have said Pangea. I meant when everything was still clo- way <laughs> oh, closer okay. together, you know? Okay. Like... Not as spread out as it is. So these islands and the water levels were way different. You know what I mean? Because uh, like during the Ice Age or whatever, it sucked up a lot of the water and land was visible or there was ice bridges. You know what I'm saying? I, I have no idea about the yeah. climate back then. So, okay. Yeah, but So like, yeah, if a lot of it's ice, you know what I mean? It, the I believe the water levels were way lower. See, when I have a drink, I'm like doubting myself, but otherwise I know the shit. So, and there was, so there's either ice bridges or the water was lower those were the two options that's like why we had the barren strait from russia to alaska Mm -hmm. and that's why we had people come down ice bridge but also the water levels were depleting so between landlocked islands or lands that became islands uh that's how they would get across so these things migrated from africa across europe and asia down toward the peninsula of what is now australia right and then the water rose and they were all trapped on individual islands where the high points were, right? And these things, when you're on an island, nothing needs to get big. You can just be, that's why, um, you know, like Galapagos tortoises exist and are huge because there's nothing there to kill it. There's, you don't have huge predators. You don't have, you don't, you're not competing with an elephant or something for resources. Um, you know, everything will get to a certain degree of big based on its resources, you know? So if, I guess I was counterproductive when I said Galapagos tortoises are huge, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like there's no predators. Everything can, you only grow to the land that you're on. I know it. <laughs> kind of the opposite of your point. I know. I totally <laughs> went down with the Galapagos <laughs> shit. I meant, yeah, I meant there's like no predators. Things can only get to a certain size. So like 
these things went to these humanoids, hominids. Little evolutionary pressures too. Yeah, that as well. These hominids went to these islands and apparently they found bones on like the New Zealand islands, I believe, in Australia and shit of these tiny, tiny people. And this I know for a fact is true. Whatever yeah. babble I just gave could be hearsay. But uh, I know for the fact that like I watched this in, in class and they oh fuck that up. It scared me. And they uh they are like they were like only like two feet tall and like the I think like the pigs on the island or something were even bigger than them. Like they were really they ended up just they only needed resources to keep a little bit of you know like you're ex- you're expending more energy when there's bigger things to fight when you have to run farther and to find food when everything's in this dense little island and nothing can get away. You don't need to expend as much energy. You don't need to get as big. You can just hide and you know. So it was kind of crazy to see, but, uh, so that's kind of proof of like, you know, just, I don't know where I was going with that, but basically just, there's a lot of different, you know, branches. And so it's kind of crazy to see that a Neanderthal had the intelligence and cognitive capabilities, whereas we didn't even really think them were much above a primate. Anyway, let's just go to the next one. I got on a tangent about them little people. I, I got to find out the name of them. Yeah, I, I got to find out the name of the smart ones. The I, smart I totally ones. think they were like some ones that are so smart or something, but... uh, You know yeah. what sucks? I used to know like all this. Like when I took evolutionary psych and shit, I loved those classes. I got to admit, I uh, remember hearing about all these from a Cracked article back when Cracked.com used to be good. What was Cracked? <laughs> oh gosh, it's like this website. It's it's really shitty nowadays, but it's this website that there's like these lists and stuff, and it was something like, uh, um, like uh, our distant cousins, if... uh we didn't kill them all because apparently like homo sapiens killed everyone else yeah. like us. Um, yeah. But, um, cause we were stronger and yeah. bigger but this, and faster. This is probably an article like 10 years ago before they, you know, when they were still good and stuff. And I remember reading about it and like spending like weeks and months reading about all these, uh, yeah, I got into the just rabbit cause hole. Of this, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, just cause of this, uh, article I read and it was like so many Wikipedia pages and stuff, just spending time reading all about That's it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't know. Like when I was taking that class and like learning, like, like I remember watching this one video and they were they were saying that the reason like and I've listened to some different evolutionary psychologists and stuff and they say the reason that we began walking upright is because we wanted to carry weapons and tools so when we came out of the, all right and not for anybody who doesn't believe in evolution or whatever I'm just saying like the science can show this stuff this is facts um when we were primatized and we were in trees we wanted to come down and we needed everything started you know the desert started drying up you know food was getting scarce so we needed to go look for food and stuff so we came out of the trees and you didn't want to really run and into this wide open without a weapon to protect yourself because now everything can see you you're not in a tree hiding so we wanted to carry something like a rock and then in order to be able to throw it we had to be able to stand upright. So eventually those who could throw the best natural selection and those who could stand upright and carry the weapon became the best survivors, which became bipedalism, which became now that we're walking and we have a weapon, let's try to walk a little faster, which became running. But when you're running, you need to sweat. So when you sweat, you can't have all this hair. So we began shedding hair and those with the less hair began to survive more than those with a lot of hair. So then we became skinless, walking, bipedal, arm throwing, humanoids hominids you know like first off two things when you're talking about uh, us walking upright i would like just like posture correcting me too i'm sure sure every single person listening right now is also like oh oh Oh, man Uh, second yeah here we are (laughs) second human evolutionary evolution is just like amazing like humans are badass yeah like like i mean we survived the shit like thinking about like horror movies and stuff no humans are like what horror movies are made of. Like, you know how you got movies of, like, something that just keeps going and stuff? Well, imagine being, like, a tiger. Like, you know, you're a fierce-ass creature. Then you, like, see some like some a laser weird alien-looking <laughs> things that aren't walking on their four feet, yeah. whatever. And this is, like, 100,000 years ago when humans were, like, still hunters and stuff. Yeah. Like, we did, like, hunting in our lands to survive and stuff. And, like, uh, you know, you might kill one or two of them, but there's like another 10. So you start running away and like, you're, I mean, you're this big fierce creature, you know, you run for like half a mile, look Excuse back, me. don't see any of them, whatever. And we maybe a tree on you. Maybe, well, maybe a minute later, all of a sudden you see them again in the distance. You're like, shit. So you take off for another half mile, you're free again. And then you look back and there and they are again. But this time you got to take like a two minute rest. And then you do it again, run away another yeah. mile, and then they're still there, still running after you. And yeah. the next thing you know, like, you know, you've been 
you ran your extent, which for a line, I don't know how far lines could be, but who knows? It might be 10 miles or something. Right. And now this like fierce creature can barely walk and these, these weird alien like things are now right on him and killing the yeah. this fierce animal. Dude, that's so, I mean, yeah. human humans are badass. I yeah. Mean, we're, uh, I mean, we literally are what horror movies are made of. Yeah. No, seriously, man. And that's like, that's how tribes in like Kenya and Africa and stuff still do it. Like they will just, that's how we became so good at hunting. We just ran the distance. Yeah. We, I mean, we run and tire out prey. I mean, yeah. Isn't that awesome? Like yeah. awesome in the fan of like grand grandiosity or grandioso, you know, like, that's awesome. Like a yeah. huge feat yeah. to be able to know that you can do and just keep running. Yeah. There's only like few creatures that can actually like keep up with the human, uh, uh, like endurance. endurance. I think it might be like some type of dogs, like sled dogs and such. And oh yeah. Then, uh, I then there's like some other camels. Uh, I can't even think horses. of horses. Well, no horses. I mean, humans can be horses in five mile long races and stuff. Really? Yeah. Horses I mean, horses, need horses need breaks. Yeah. I mean, humans. Well, are, that's why, yeah. A lot of the hunting in Africa is done with like, deer and undulates you know because they just tire out eventually and then eventually i've heard of certain animals their heart will stop because they yeah. get too out of breath mm -hmm. i mean yeah i mean there's i think i read this thing i don't know how long ago i might be completely wrong on what i'm saying but it said something like if you can run something like three miles in under 25 minutes or so you're considered like a top predator in the entire planet earth wow yeah and I mean, and any human can do that with just a month of training. Yeah, because even just like watching Animal Planet, you can see that like no other animal, like cheetahs can run yeah. fast, but not far. Anything yep. that can go fast can't go far, and we would go the distance. Yeah, and that's yep. how we became so good at what we did. And have you ever heard the the uh, stories or the, the theory of why our brains got bigger through me eating? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I ever heard that. I... I've always heard it had more to do with the whole uh, us skating our endurance and long distance running. Well, right. Why the, why so our then, grew. well, it had to do partially. They believe it had to do with the fact that we could run far, and then you got the prey, you got meat, and then we realized how to make fire. And then we started cooking the meat. You got rid of bacteria and toughness. So, um, well, was that more of a correlation of starting to eat meat and then us skating those ideas because of the meat, or is the meat? expanding the uh brain power of the humans well i think i think I, well i think there's different properties to raw meat in cooked meat i think um you know with raw meat that's why i think we're seeing a lot of like like wisdom teeth need to be taken out because we needed more teeth to grind tough meat you know and our teeth these like the like chimps have yeah. sharper teeth yeah you what know? are those like a like a Vestibular structures or something like yeah, that, like that, yeah. and like your uh, spleen or something. And things that are going away those. slowly. They, things, well, things that we don't even need nowadays. Yeah, so, appendix, but, not your spleen. Yeah, appendix. Wait, you need your spleen. It yeah, creates like yeah, sodium bicarbonate, yeah. I believe. For your I mean, yeah, you don't need your heart, lungs. You know, you can just throw those out yeah. too. You know, don't need Junk any it. of them. Yeah. But anyway, so they thought they think that eating cooked meat got rid of a lot of diseases, soft in the meat. So then we needed. We didn't need to like chew as much, so we didn't need as big of a jaw, and we didn't need all those big teeth, you know. So our jaws, those with smaller jaws, were doing. This is all natural selection, which is what's awesome to me. I find it so interesting, and uh, so we could, we were getting in all the nutrients because the meat was cooked, get, avoiding any bacteria, not getting sick and dying. Our jaws got smaller, which made more room for our the rest of our skull, which all that pr new protein. Now we could run faster and catch it. We could cook it, eat it softly, eat a lot of it. Um, so all that protein and that, all that meat and stuff and all that energy, really, it's just energy went and helped create bigger brains, which is why we, we, we began as soon as they say, if you like compare when we discovered fire and when we started becoming prime hunters and stuff to when the brain started getting bigger and homo sapiens split from like Neanderthals, it's, it's in the same ballpark. So that's like a, just a crazy concept of how we came to be, you know, and there's so many other concepts like people believe uh, cavemen did hallucinate. And this is uh, Steven Pinker, I believe. Uh, it's a guest I had recently seen on Joe Rogan had discussed it, and it was a very interesting topic. They believe Neanderthals began eating mushrooms, all mushrooms, and one of them, a psilocybin probably, was able to cause, like, you know, they say it causes, like, language changes and all that. And like you're thinking things differently. Apparently, that's how they think. Uh, one possibility of why language was developed, just a creation of vocalizations 
while eating these strange substances and expanding the mind a little bit. So that's just like another, you know, when I get into like the concept of evolution and all the different possibilities of how we came to be, I'll examine any door. I'll look at anything, you know, and I find it so fascinating. It's just one aspect, Mm -hmm. one aspect of science, you know, um, I didn't realize how long it's been. I wanted to rip through these quick and just kind of get your opinion on them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're all so interesting. I know. We hit the hour, and like that was <laughs> – we could do a whole nother hour just talking about these. Okay. Uh, so we got the found the oldest cave art. We discovered a new organ. It's not really an organ. It's like an organelle, I guess you'd say, I think. It's, it's kind of like a pathway. Like your, It's called um, interstitium. Stitium. Yeah, it's kind of like just like a pathway. Like, um, like what are those? Like – um. Your oh, you've already heard of this pathway. And you've then, heard of this? Yeah, yeah. Like you know, you have your blood pathway, and then like God, I don't, I don't know the names. So like well. your limbs, like your, like your, your, like your neural system, and then like your bone system. Yeah, something like skeletal. That. Yeah, skeletal. Yeah, <laughs> those are the terms you learned back in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> it says the interstitium, and it's all over your insides, in between your muscles, your around your veins and arteries, lining your digestive tract, surrounding your lungs. The discovery was announced in March. And scientists were only able to find it because of high-tech new imaging technique that doesn't require any cutting. That's important because the interstitium is a series of interconnected fluid-filled cavities, and those cavities collapse when you take a sample. So literally a tiny microscopic portal system of just fluid, probably like plasma. Or I don't even know. Water maybe. And Who when knows? you cut it, it, it disappears. That's crazy that we've been able to find that now. Uh, the Golden State. I didn't read this one. I must have skimmed over. The Golden State Killer was caught via a genealogy yeah, website, like Twenty Three Me or something like that, right? Yeah. Joseph D'Angelo in April, the man we know to be the Golden State Killer, a serial murderer who got away with his crimes for decades, was arrested based on DNA evidence. But that evidence wasn't in any federal database. It happened to match the DNA of a relative who had uploaded their genealogy data to the open source website GED Match. There's actually been like a few criminal cases. Wow. Because of. I knew that would happen. Like the 23andMe and all that. They are not just compiling it to give you, oh, oh hey, you're Irish. No, it's because they want that database. Yeah, no, there's a, it's not 23andMe. It's another company. They actually, in their terms of services, they actually list that they'll actually use their own data and uh, sell it to companies for their own use. Yeah. Like the freaking CIA and FBI. I'm more worried like health insurance companies, you know, say you're susceptible to uh, cancer or something, you might get a higher premium. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You would think outside the box of that. I want conspiracy theorists. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, We discovered a whole lot of distant worlds. In February, we made the first discovery of extra galactic planets. That is planets not outside our solar system, but planets outside of our galaxy. In July, we found out Jupiter had 12 more moons we didn't know about. At the beginning of October, we got a twofer with the first discovery of a moon beyond our solar system and the discovery of a little world beyond Pluto, the astronomer's name, the Goblin. They actually just found another one about a week ago. Really? Um, it, it's an uh, exoplanet, so like a, something that's not technically like, a planet. Like Pluto. Yeah, like Pluto. Um, it did so far out. I mean, the, thing, the reason they don't ever find these is because... Uh, uh, the way you look at planets from galaxies away is you'll look at them when they transition over the sun. Right. So you see a uh, little black spots going over the sun, and that lets you notice planets. Right. Um, with uh, places, with ones in our own area, obviously you can't see a little planet going over a little speck of a star from millions of light years away. So we rely on our own sun's ability to uh, bounce light off of them. That doesn't really happen when they're so far away that no light can reach them. Yeah. So we're still discovering planets in our own solar system all yeah. the time. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I once heard that in the amount of time Pluto became a planet and was not a planet, it has not even gone around one orbit of the sun. It's been like a long time. I don't know how long. I think it's like a couple hundred years. We could look that up later. Uh, the first ancient human hybrid was discovered. Uh, paleogeneticists announced they had an discovered something extraordinary an ancient human female who died in a siberian cave ninety thousand years ago was the child of a neanderthal and a denisovan father which is like also like a neanderthal but a different split a denisov so that's pretty crazy it's a, so it'd be a cousin to the homo sapien we found signs of liquid water on mars now i did hear about this yeah. and uh basically they suggested 
Our radar data from the Mars, the space, European Space Agency's Mars Express, or the ESA, received radar data that suggested a 20-kilometer, 12.5-mile zone of liquid water in the sediments right below the South Pole of Mars, as in under the, under the dirt. Um, while we've discovered water, ice, and even evidence of snowstorm on Mars, this is the most promising evidence, which is good news for crewed missions. Well, that is pretty yeah, no, awesome. I, I was pretty excited about that. I can't wait until the day we can actually look in the water because that's prime bacterial area. I mean, yeah. we could actually find life on Earth. I mean, life on a different planet. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, there's such a worry about contamination that we're probably like crossing 20 years away from actually looking at it well don't they th some some people think that mars was once thriving and it died for some reason and that's what yeah, they're worried about i mean there's there's you ideas about it i mean yeah exactly you never know um yeah here's what i think imagine if it was like you know by the by our time system maybe it was year zero here imagine if it was all going to shit then yeah like there, uh, you know? like if they also pump their uh, planets Full of uh, what if somebody already gases? <laughs> we yeah, we didn't get to see Mars for two almost two thousand years, you know. And what if it all went to shit and they left already? You know, <laughs> like isn't that a crazy thought? I mean, there's ideas that like, you know, there's such a uh, hard thoughts about how life started on Earth. There's ideas that like uh, we might have actually come from Mars. Yes, I've asteroid. heard that. I think that's more of a theory, but. Well, I mean, it wouldn't even be close to a theory in a scientific sense. Well, I mean, I, like a, a conspiracy theory. I don't think it's yeah. like a real possibility. I don't know. I think we would know by now, like the, like the geography and how we know where the moon came from, kind of thing. Like parts of, you know what I mean? I don't think. I think we would know by now if Mars was part us. But I do have a really good story. I'll tell you off the air. Okay. Like a short story idea about Mars. I've been trying to write it. It's pretty awesome. Uh, okay, let's get through these. It's been. Uh, we're getting, we're getting through it. Not that I, I'm sure everybody loves listening to this. I know everyone we work with is going to love this. I know, especially the Jonesy finger story. Jonesy was so pumped to see that you were coming on. All right, uh, lots of spacecrafts launched. Yeah, we know Tesla and everybody in Japan's Hayabusa. Japan's Hayabusa 2 spacecraft. Hayabusa is like their motorcycle. You know, the crazy crotch rocket. <laughs> That's so funny. They named their spacecraft Hayabusa 2. <laughs> probably, probably the same company. Um. We just oh this is the one I want to get to this one and the next one, oh there's only three left. We discovered the oldest known organism, uh, a fossil organism called Dickinsonia. Dick in Sonia. Dick in Sonia. Wait, uh, as in wait, is this a uh, three words? Dick and Sonia or Dick I'm not saying there's a one. Dick in Sonia. I'm saying it's called a Dick in Sonia. One word. Okay. Uh, is this named after someone named Dick and Sonia? Or? I think I would picture Sonia to be a place, and there's just a real dick there. It's just a <laughs> dick. <laughs> like, maybe, no one wants to get maybe, coffee with him. Maybe they discovered this in, like, a town named Sonia, and it, uh, it's shaped like a dick. Maybe that's <laughs> um, <coughs> It lived 558 million years ago, which is 20 million years before the Cambrian explosion when we began to see the fossil record. So before even normal microscopic parasites and everything mm -hmm. became fossilized that's amazing that's i don't know that was a short paragraph and it seems and it, it came from australia it seems like that should be the longest <laughs> <laughs> scientists produced a mice with two mothers uh chinese scientists announced they had used genetically edited stem cells to produce healthy mice from two mothers those mice lived into adulthood and went on to produce the offspring of their own so these are viable offspring because yeah. they became they mothers to viable offspring. So that's really impressive. But although they do say, uh, it's not likely that it's going to happen with humans anytime I mean, soon. Well, there are some species. There's a lizard species. That's one gender, uh, specifically female. Yeah. You got yeah. crab people, uh, lizard men. Who else? No, I'm actually serious. Wait, what? Yeah. There's a species of lizards and it's all female. Oh, I thought you meant, I, I thought you meant species in terms of people. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I think I've heard about this, and they they are asexual, but they're able to convert when needed, right, or something. No, I don't think so. I mean, how do they get pregnant? I don't know. Are you talking about Godzilla? Because Godzilla is asexual and has sex with itself. Uh, Godzilla is the greatest documentary of all time. Godzilla okay. is the best. Movie. The <laughs> the one with uh, John Cusack, or not John Cusack? Who's the guy? Ferris Bueller. No, you want to know the greatest documentary of all time? Armageddon. That is a good movie. That's what the Bruce Willis going yeah. up there and uh, saving us all from asteroid. That's what yeah, kickstarted his acting career. Everyone's like, "Oh, he just saved Earth, 
Earth. Let's uh, get him into movies now. You don't mean my man Bruce Willis. What are we doing? It's a little thing they invented back in the 60s called jogging. You're going to love it. Come on. <laughs> I love Bruce Willis. Um, but yeah, no, I'm serious. I, I, I'm, I think I have heard of that. I, I was I, just making fun of... I thought you were calling people lizard people because people think there are lizard people. Like the real <laughs> diehard conspiracy yep. weirdos. Um, okay. I'm going to get through this because my phone's going to die. Be allowed outside. And finally, the last one, which was kind of interesting to me because I deal with calibrations and measurements. Uh, we redefined the kilogram this year. Was it really redefined or are we just set our standard amount instead uh, of just like using that genetic. huge kilogram so, stone that's in yes, somewhere in yes, Europe? Yeah, so uh, it's an iron. Let's see. Uh, I think it was just more setting a standard for it rather than redefining it. Okay, so yeah, we used to use like a meter as just a one bar that was held. I forgot where. And that used to be one standard meter. And everybody weighed uh, or measured a meter to that. And in 1983, that got changed. And it's now based on the speed of light and how far something travels because that's our standard speed of light and how far something can go 3. Point whatever feet is one meter. So the kilogram, finally, yes, uh, in Paris is the standards of weight and measures for the world. And they have the kilogram, the original kilogram and gram. And those weights and measures are all there. And every other weight and measure is based off of those as of until this year, apparently. Because now they're using it as uh, it's based off of Planck's constant, which is... Uh, six point oh two two times ten to the negative twenty third. I mean, I it's too far over my head. I might know that number, but I don't know what Planck's constant. Oh no, that's Avogadro's number. Planck's constant. I don't remember. I just took chemistry out that long ago. <laughs> um, yeah. So so they're weighing kilograms by a legit means of scientific measure, which is cool. I think it's awesome that we're always working toward becoming a more a, a better adapted, better equipped society, and we have abilities through the years to just to the micro decimal measure something or find something that's so old. And I think that's what science is all about. Trying to make this come back to what we wanted to start with. I mean, I regularly measure stuff to the picogram at work, which is one trillionth of a gram. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how much I I do it every single day. It's amazing how much of that stuff can, can be significant to us. You know, a couple findings of, of mixing some, you know, some matrix with a drug and you find this, the, the answer there. It's amazing to see that we've come so far from just doing backdoor science and, and doctoring and voodoo even before that, just the crazy stuff. And we've come a long way and we're always coming a long way and we're going to keep growing and expediting the future and making new advancements and we're going to keep furthering ourselves. And I think it's because we have people like you People like me who love science, uh, people who are doing the good work like you're about to be doing and trying to solve cures to ailments and trying to help people survive longer and do more positive things for mankind. So I think it's all very cyclical. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say thanks for coming on and thanks yeah, for definitely. I, I, I wish you the best of luck. I guess I can cue my uh, outro music here. It's not as loud as I want it to be, but I'll work on it. So, yeah, man. Uh, thank you for coming. I wish you the best of luck in New York City. Yeah. This has been real. I'll definitely come down. We'll do the Jimmy Wilson yeah, experience. Yeah, I'm looking, for, uh, looking forward to part two. Yeah, dude. Yeah. This is a good time, man. And uh, like I said, good luck with everything. I hope it works out with nothing but the best for you. I'll, I'll be down to see you. Not, definitely. Not long. Yeah. Uh, just anybody who believes in their, in their desire to follow a scientific field or anything that they feel passionate about just do it life is short and i think if anybody has their head on their shoulders enough it's two guys who went and are continuing to try and live their lives as best we can and just do what makes us happy so whether it be science whether it be reading writing whether it be making a podcast do what makes you happy and i think that's all that matters so everybody again i love everybody who gives me support thank you all so much follow me on youtube Facebook, give me a like. Uh, you're going to see some thumbnails and uh, clips coming up on Instagram here this week. By the time all of you realize this, uh, there will be a few episodes out. So, yep. 
Uh, thanks again, man. Anything you want to say or? Oh uh, no, no, I've had a good time. And awesome. Can, uh, I mean, definitely flew by. I know. Yeah. I we could talk for hours. Yeah. And that's what I love about our friendship, man. It's just shooting the breeze yep. like it's nothing. And I hope these guys just got a glimpse at, at I, what what it's like. <laughs> I, I, I actually sent him a little like a. Uh, like a bullet point thing of things we wanted to hit up. I think we hit like, like two one, of them, yeah. <laughs> one or two out of like the ten things. <laughs> I knew that's how it was gonna go, though, dude. Because I mean, we just you know we just kind of kept on having so much good trades. Yeah, thought, you know? it's good conversation yeah. always with yeah. you, man. And so uh, for everybody else out there who is having a good day, what? keep on keeping on. And everybody who's not, cheers, cheers, and uh, try not to get too lost out there. Have a good one, everyone. <laughs>